As the autumn leaves fall and the air turns crisp, it's that time of year when my focus shifts onto one species in particular, the Xander. These elusive creatures have always captivated me, their mysterious nature making each encounter a unique challenge. Fishing for Xander can be quite challenging, especially for newcomers. In this video, I'm going to guide you through my strategies for locating Xander in unfamiliar waters and I'm going to provide you with some valuable tips to make your fishing experience more rewarding. So I'm going to be running through my approach to a new stretch of water. This water in particular that I'm on today, it's on the lower seven, and it's a water that I have fished before, but for barbel. So this is as new to me as it is to you guys. Now, one of my favorite methods for searching a stretch of river has to be the tip. And the reason for that is it's one rod, I can move swims, I'm just traveling as light as I, as I possibly can, because the worst thing you can do is, especially on the new water that you, you know nothing about, you don't know where the fish are, you don't know where they're residing, the worst thing you can do is bring a load of gear down, set up in one or two swims and fish them for most of the day. You need to be going and finding where these Xander are holding up. And there'll be spots all up and down the river and there'll, there'll be also spots within a spot. So you need to be on the move. Fish each swim 30 to 40 minutes and then move on. Now, when you do land on Xander, the bites can come pretty quickly. So, in this swim that I'm, I'm in right now, it's quite a big swim. I've not got any overhanging trees above me. I've got freedom to cast in a number of different areas. So it's worth trying to just work the swim, cast around every sort of 10 minutes while you're, while you're here, and see if you can find some bites. Now, what you're looking for in, in particular on the bite front is almost like a chub rattle. You're not going to get these big slamming bites like barbel. Um, you're actually looking for just, just little rattles on the tip, just little plucks almost. And you need to be hitting those bites pretty quickly. Don't let it develop. And the worst thing you can do is just pick the rod up, open the bail arm and let, let it have line. It's already felt something it doesn't like at this point. When you're fishing the tip, there's going to be resistance no matter what you do. Xander do not like resistance. So whether you're fishing with a lightweight, a heavyweight, it doesn't matter because they're still going to come into contact with the tip of your rod. So hit the bites quickly, set the hook, because they will get rid of it. And I've seen it on underwater footage. Um, fish have come in. The Xander's sucked it straight into its mouth and without even moving away to actually give itself any resistance from the rig, it's automatically felt something it doesn't like. Now I've got this theory that they do not like the feel of the hooks. Um, they just stay on the spot, not like a pike will pick it up and then start to move away with it. They'll, they'll stay on the spot and they'll just start shaking their head and it'll just be out of the mouth really easily. Xander have got very bony moves and they, they, they can eject baits pretty easy. So, like I say, if you hit the bites quick, it's going to up your chances of actually landing a fish. You want to be looking for somewhere that's got depth, um, a murky river, Xander like hunting in lower light conditions. But don't be fooled in thinking that you're only going to catch them at night because that's, that's not true at all. I have most of my Xander in the daytime. Just watch the conditions. As long as the water isn't completely gin clear and it's not bright sunshine, you'll catch fish throughout the day. I'm on my third swim so far this morning. I got here quite early. I'm on my third swim right now. So what I'm going to do is, um, I've had no joy in this one. I'm just going to have a little recast try a different area in the swim and I'm going to get on my toes and I'm going to try and find somewhere else. Well, 
finally, I think I'm on about. Oh, has this found a snag? No! Please don't tell me it's come off. No! You. <laughs> no, no, no! Found a snag right in the edge. That was a Xander. Booger, booger, booger. <laughs> Can't believe that. So unfortunately that one got away. Kind of caught me off guard to be honest. I wasn't really expecting it. It was kind of out of the blue. I was literally just thinking about moving to the next spot. And um, all of a sudden the tip's just gone. I've hit it. Didn't feel a big fish, I'll be honest. Um, but once I got it near the edge, there's a bit of water on today. I think there was, when I checked, there was two meters on this river last night. It's probably dropped a bit since, but I have no idea what's down there in front of me. Uh, it's, it's gone underneath something, whether it's just a lump of grass or some, some trunk of a tree that's under there, I don't know. It snugged me up a little bit and uh, he's managed to, to wangle himself free. So I've chucked it back in. Hopefully we'll, we'll get another bite, but it's a good sign. It's a good sign. Like I said, I've, I've, I've been moving all, all morning. I think this is about my seventh or eighth swim now. And um, eventually you will come across one. There, are, there is gonna be days where it just doesn't happen for you, but you just gotta keep putting the work in, keep moving, just keep believing. Eventually you'll come across something. Where there's one with the Xander, there's usually more. They're a pack hunting fish. But it might be the case now, because I've hooked one here and it's got away, I'm gonna to struggle to get another bite here for a couple of hours. So this might be another spot that I'll drop in a bit later on this evening, maybe on the way back to the car. Um, but I'm gonna give it another 15, sort of 15, 20 minutes here, see what happens. And then I'll get on my toes again and um, and hopefully at some point today, well, we'll have one to show you. So before I cast this rod back into the water, I'm just going to quickly show you how I'm set up for these Xander. So I've got a two and a half pound test curve rod. I've got friends who use a 1.75. Personally, I like to use something that's got a bit more, um, a bit more beef in it. You know, I want to be able to set them up properly. I can still see the bites perfectly fine on this rod, not a problem at all. It's got a white tip on it as well. You could use a barbel rod, a barbel quiver, something like that if you wanted to. Um, I've got a mini pit style reel that's got 40 pound braid on. Um, I like to use braid. I prefer to use braid. It's a much lower diameter much higher strength which means it's going to create a lot less toe in the water and it also means that if I get snagged up I can get things back okay I'm not leaving a baited trace in the water now that runs down to a run ring this is a running rig and I've got a feeder on there this is a four ounce feeder I like to use quite heavy heavy feeders especially if there's a little bit more extra water and I can hold the flow better um, I was fishing with a gripper lead this morning, but I decided because of the clarity of the water and how coloured it is, I've switched to a feeder because I want to pack that full of dead chop fish, which is going to give me an extra scent trail. And it's going to provide a hell of a lot more attraction than just a standard bait on its own and a lead. Now, before I get down to my trace, I always leave, we've probably got about, I don't know, 10, 12 inches of coated braid there, strong coated braid, same strength as my main line. And that's just, just to, as a sort of like a semi-stiff boom. You could use like a, a really thick, strong fluorocarbon there. Um, it's just to give a bit of extra separation from my bait to the feeder. Rather than using two foot, three foot of trace, I'll just use that extra bit of coated, coated braid there, say wasting wire. Now, <clears throat> talking about trace, I tie my traces up a little bit differently to, to what most people probably do. Um, I actually only tie 
the bottom three inches with the hooks on and then it's attached to a swivel because nine times out of ten when you tie let's say you tie a two foot rig up or an 18 inch rig up what happens when you get snagged up you be blunt a hook you might snap a hook off the end of your trace can get a bit kinked after you've been playing a fish or you've been caught in a snag and it's generally the last three to four inches isn't it so what i tend to do is i tie them up like that because if i bend open a hook if i break one off if it gets kinked anywhere down here anything generally I'm not happy with I can just unclip that and clip it back onto my up trace so this is just a trace that I've tied probably 15 inches long it's just got a clip on the end very rarely do I have to change this very rarely do I have to change this at all so I'm not replacing it with another two foot of wire which if it's kinked or if I've got hooks on it which are no good you're probably going to cut off the bits that are okay and then you're going to discard the wire so this will just save you so much wire so it's really simple i can just clip on another three inch trace and i can tie them really quick as well really easy like that now in regards to bait i would say this is the probably the average size that i'll use six inches perfect size if you go much smaller than that, I find you get a lot of pickups from smaller fish. I don't tend to cut baits in half. I don't just use a head section. Um, as you can see, I'm using trebles. These are size six trebles. And I'm very finicky when I, I pick my hooks because what I want is a really fine wire hook. I don't want a hook that's really thick in the gauge. Because Xander have got such bony mouths, there's not a lot of skin to hook onto. A finer, sharper hook is going to land you a lot more fish so and, and the also the other added benefit of that is if you do get snagged up a finer wire gauge is much easier to open up and you're much more likely to get things back rather than leaving a baited trace in the water which is what you don't want because if a fish picks that up it's potentially going to it's, it's a death trap isn't it so you want to make sure that you get as much as much tackle back as possible um, i always hook my baits this way up as well as you can see by hooked in the lip there's just much more hook being exposed there rather than hooking it the other way the second hook the bottom hook just goes down the flank also means that when i retrieve this um, it's coming back the right way through the water i'm much more likely for this to be picked up on the way in uh, as opposed to if it was coming in the wrong way backwards and it's a great thing you, you can rig them like that for sink and draw if you wanted to you could take the feeder off just put a little sinker weight on there or something and just just sort of jig it back through the water um, for pike and stuff which is is really really good um, in terms of choice of bait roach generally is my is one of my go-to's um, but don't be afraid to use sea deads uh, smelt in particular is a really good bait and if you can get your hands on some bleak uh, that is a really really good zander bait but um, you might have to go and catch them yourself. I don't actually think you can buy them um, from a tackle shop. I've never seen them. If you know where you, can, where you can buy some, please drop it down in the comments so I can buy some myself because I'd love to get my hands on some bleak. Fantastic Xander bait. So yeah, don't be afraid to use bigger baits. You don't have to use little sections. Xander won't just pick up small baits. That's just a, a common misconception with this fish. Um, it's a load of Taters, taters, as we say in the black country, <laughs> it's it's a fallacy. They'll pick up anything. If you're in the if you're in the right area and you've got a bait on, you stand a chance, right? So I prefer to use trebles. I know other people use single hooks, circle hooks. Just experiment, find what works best for you. I've not used a single hook. I've not, well, I've not used a circle hook. Um, I probably would try it at some point down the line just to see if it works, if it's any better. But for me, that's, that's what I use. And um, generally I won't use anything smaller than a six um, and a four. Um, a six and a four for me, even with a, a bait of this size, size four hooks, absolutely fine. Don't be afraid to use big hooks. So with that said, um, I'm gonna get this back in the water, see if I can find some more fish. We've lost one today. Probably gonna fish up until the last hour of light. Uh, hour into dark, and just see how we get on. 
So unfortunately that stretch of the seven didn't throw up any more bites and so two days later I decided to go on to the River Avon which turned out to be the wrong decision because when I got there the river was absolutely gin clear which to me in the daytime it's really really difficult to get bites when it's that clear. So I made a conscious decision to move over to another stretch of the River Seven that I hadn't fished before and um, yeah I managed to hook into a fish and as you'll see now the results I also managed to lose that fish as well. Finally we seem to have got one. Oh please stay on for the love of God stay on. I have worked so hard to get this fish so I am just praying to God that it stays on. Whatever you do, do not find a snag. I'll tell you what, don't feel too bad either. I don't, want to, I don't want to give it too much stick. I just want to take it nice and gentle. There it is. I think it is a Xander. I don't think it's massive, but it's not massive. It's quite small, actually. Oh, it's a fish. We finally got one. We finally got one. There it is. And it's just come off. Oh my god. Ah. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing. Now, unfortunately, after losing that fish, um, which does tend to happen quite a lot when you hook in loads of small fish, they have a real knack of shaking the hooks right at the net. Um, two days later, on the weekend, uh, I thought I'd have another go on another stretch of the lower seven, and um, well, this one actually turned out to be pretty, pretty good. So, we'll have a little quick look at that now. go three different rivers god knows how many different swims and boy has it paid off big time 15 pounds and eight ounces i think it was absolutely made up that's a new pb for me as well what a fish awesome <laughs> wow